Good afternoon. I hope everybody's doing great. Um, excited to get started. Excited to be wearing one uniform here uh, from here on out. Uh, certainly pumped up to, to be here today and uh, the last few days here on Oregon's campus. Um, exciting for me. I, you know, our staff just got done doing a campus tour and I just continue to be impressed with the innovation uh, on this campus. Got to see um, you know, our academic center and our, our whole coaching staff got to spend some time over there in the JQA Center, uh, see the, the track facility. I mean, find out that we're the number one sports business school in the nation. Um, just some of these things that just continue to impress me with where we're headed in the direction and the excitement around our program in this university um, is thrilling. Obviously, this past week, uh, past month for, for me and our staff has been uh, a roller coaster, a lot of fun. Uh, I wouldn't change a minute of it. It's been such a rewarding experience getting to go uh, compete with the guys that I've coached for such a long time and uh, finish it on a high note with winning that national championship. But with that being said, we'll go ahead and uh, open this up for questions. All right, we're going to start with James Kripia from the Oregonian. Dan, first, congrats on Monday. Uh, a, a ton to go over with you in personnel, so I'm going to try and actually hit on three things within one position at, at once. Can you walk us through the process with Sean Dollars, confirm that Trey Benson may or may not do the same that you've been able to do with Sean and, and Seven, and if you know what the status of C.J. Verdell and Travis Dye is, if they're going to opt out of the draft and return or if they've made a decision one way or another. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I think each one of those conversations is a personal to, you know, conversation with those players, and um, it doesn't necessarily have to be on here. Um, but you oh, – a lot of that, again, James, is just conversation. It's that. It's being able to have a conversation. And when you're in a different part of the world, you can't have those. You know, so when you get back here to home base and you're able to sit down, I think that's, um, you know, a lot of what uh, – there's a lot that can be accomplished when that happens. Uh, some of these guys are still going through the process of making some of those decisions. And I don't want to necessarily put a timeline on um, each person's situation because each situation is different. I'll say this. I'm excited about – uh, the group of backs we have will continue to be aggressive in finding guys that can enhance our program and make us better. Um, but I think that uh, a lot of those guys will be a part of what we're doing moving forward. Matt Prem, 247 Sports. Yeah, Dan, can you speak on just the significance of getting the offensive linemen to come back for another year? Uh, Popo, Dorless, Bennett. You had about 10 guys or eight guys come out and say that they want to play another year. Just the significance of that for you. Yeah, I'm excited about this team um, just because, you know, as much as for the players that we have, uh, the caliber of men that we have on this team that are excited to compete. I think they share a vision that I share of what what we can be here and what uh, this program can become. And I think they, you know, they recognize uh, what we're putting together. It's really special. And I want the guys that want to be here. You know, I told our players the very first time I met them, you know, the reality is we're going to win with the players that are here, the players that are on this team right now. Um, we're going to continue, you know, continue to focus on the guys that are on this team right now, building our success moving forward um, with those players. And then again, looking for opportunities to enhance it because there are some places that we can we can grow and places we can get better along the road. Eric Scopel, 247 Sports. Coach, I wanted to ask you about the quarterback position. I guess what, what do you look for from a quarterback? What are some attributes? Um, why did Bo Nix fit that? You coached against him a couple of times down at, at Georgia. Um, what, what did you see that allowed you to feel confident in that addition? And then is, I, I assume, but just to, to clarify, is it an open competition through spring and fall camp for, for that starting job? Yeah, competition breeds excellence. I mean, ultimately, and we're, we're going to have competition at every position across the board, um, quarterback included. Um, what, what I think that I know about Bo, he's an ultimate competitor. Um, I know how hard he worked. Obviously, Coach Dillingham had personal experience getting an opportunity to coach Bo in the past. Um, we're really clear with Bo. Hey, you come in here, there's certainly an opportunity to compete. Um, but we're really excited about the guys we have on our roster as well and excited to see, um, you know, those guys come in and compete and go to work. So um, that that for me is exciting. Um, what am I looking for? Leadership, you know, work ethic. They, they have to, you know, you, you, you don't get to just be a quarterback on the field, right? That has to leave the field. It has to be exuded in the classroom on campus, the way you operate day in and day out. And I think, uh, we've got a group of guys that do that. Zach Neal, Duxwire. Coach, obviously a crazy last week, last month for you. I'm wondering um, if there was a chance either Monday night or maybe early Tuesday morning where you kind of 
got to take a second and mentally switch gears and focus all of your attention on just the Ducks now, now that the season's officially over. So like walking off the field in the tunnel, right? After winning the national championship, I was on a FaceTime with uh, a guy that can enhance our program and make us better. So yeah, absolutely. Like that moment, I was a duck, you know, you enjoy it. You get, you get to coach your entire career and don't always get an opportunity to win uh, a championship, but I, I've been fortunate enough to watch other people do that and juggle that in my time. I got to watch coach smart do that firsthand and his time going from Alabama uh, to Georgia. And uh, luckily enough, I had somebody I can lean on during that process, but uh, it's full steam ahead, Oregon, everything, Oregon. And it was the minute uh, I left that field and got the hug on the necks of the players that I love there, gave me an opportunity to, to move forward. And I'll say this, ultimately, a lot of the players um, that I got to visit with here at Oregon were appreciative of the commitment that I was able to make to the guys that we had there. It meant so much to me to be able to finish that season a certain way. And um, I think they were grateful and recognized okay, wow, you know, Coach Lanning says what he's about, but ultimately, I, I think I've said before, actions are so much louder than words. Getting to go back there and finish that the right way, I think spoke volumes to what I hope we can do here at Oregon and recreate. Max Torres, Ducks Digest. Coach, great to see you again. Uh, obviously, been a very busy month for you, uh, not only with Georgia, but building your staff here in Eugene. Uh, you've added a lot of big names to, to your squad. Um, just kind of wanted to ask about your perspective on finding a balance on your staff between people at the NFL level, as well as some pretty uh, distinguished college names as well. Yeah, ultimately, I think I said here before, we we're looking for two things, you know, um, relationships and development and didn't want to sacrifice uh, on either end there. I think that's really, really important as we we're, we were piecing the staff together Um you know, fortunately here at Oregon, we have the ability to be competitive and we have the ability to go get the best of the absolute best. So whether the best be in the NFL or the best be in other college programs, uh, that's what we targeted. And um, we, we went through, uh, you know, a hard search, looked really in depth at a lot of different positions. And I'm, I'm ecstatic about the group that we have put together. Some of these guys have NFL experience. Obviously, that's a big piece. Um, you know, some of these guys have, have been at the highest level uh, of college and some of them haven't, but just happen to be some of the best coaches I've ever been around or seen firsthand. So, uh, you know, what what exists in front of us here is opportunity. Um, we got an opportunity here um, for for this staff to be really, really, really special. And um, I know we got great men of character, great coaches and teachers. They're going to be around our players. Uh, and I couldn't be more thrilled about the group we put together. Jared Mack, 247 Sports. Coach, you've had some you know, pretty good success in convincing players to come back into the program, whether it be from you know, withdrawing their name from the draft or withdrawing their name from the transfer portal. Um, what is that overall message that you've been telling them? And you know, what about it do you think resonates so well with them and convincing them to stay in Eugene? I think every message is different and unique. Um, every player is a different situation. So I don't know if there's a you know, end all be all with, with each message. Um, you know, ultimately, um, I think you, if you build your program on honesty and you're honest with your players, they recognize that. So um, there's what's in the best interest of Oregon and then there's what's in the best interest of the player. And when those things align, I think really unique, special things can happen. And I think a lot of these guys have recognized that. Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports. Hey, Dan, congratulations again. Um, a couple of questions. The, the way you guys won this year um, and the way the game kind of came back a little bit to defense, was, was there a clawing back in general against kind of this offensive revolution nationwide? And then I've got a follow-up if I could. Say that, that, that the, was there a one more time? Oh, I said, I said, was there a, a clawing back in general of defenses this year nationally where they just, just got a little bit better against the offenses? You know, I mean, Ultimately, Dennis, I think it's exciting how football is an ever-changing game. You know, yeah. it continues to adapt. It's an amoeba. It doesn't stay the same. You know, it's innovative. And that's what is exciting to me because what was best in college football this year will be different next year. Um, what's best for the game this year will be different next year. Uh, and the staff and the, the group of players that handle that the best are the, are the group that's going to be successful at the end of the year. So we're going to do a hard, you know, uh, quality control analysis of where we were at Georgia. Um, coming here to Oregon, we're going to do that same thing to really evaluate what made us successful and realize that there's a difference 
uh, and what we're playing with, who we're playing against here, what we have to do to be successful. But um, I think that's part of just the, the environment that I've grown up in as a coach is a lot of people say, well, the standard can change because it's so much, you can't play defense like you used to play. And ultimately for me, I'm going to say, why not? Right? Why can we not adapt? Why can't we recreate? Um, and I, if you have a group of men that believe in that, then, you know, great things can be accomplished. And, and then real quick uh, as a follow-up, when you were considering the job, what sense did you have just for the league, for the Pac-12 and the, the fact that it hasn't been, hasn't won a championship in eight years and hasn't been to the playoff in six or, or, or was it solely a, just an Oregon thing? No, I mean, it's a, I think this is a unique opportunity. I yeah. think everyone that's sitting on the outside looking in right now can look at this league and say, okay, there's a commitment to be to, to excellence. Uh, there's obviously uh, a lot of pieces and moving parts in this league right now and a lot of opportunity for schools to advance. So I came here because I'm excited about the competition. Look, our first game next year is against an SEC opponent that I happen to know pretty well. I think they're, they got a pretty good team down there, but that excites me about coming obviously Oregon and, and getting to play in, in the Pac-12 is really, really exciting as well. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks, Dan. Andrew Hobner, KZI. Dan, congrats on the uh, national championship win. Uh, had a question about building out this staff. You know, your former head coach had a big quote this past year about the importance of recruiting and, and the lifeblood it is to a program. And basically all your assistants have that one thing in common. You know, I, you talked about, development as well as recruiting but how much in today's world was it a factor to have really good top tier recruiters at basically every assistant position you have on the field yeah I mean ultimately I don't think it matters how good a co coach you are if you're not able to have great players I mean I'm, I'm in you know I agree with coach smart you know uh, very much so from that standpoint is I've always been the best coach when I had great players but um, you know I, like I said I think great people that have great relationships are great recruiters. And when you hire people that are genuine and, um, you know, have great relationships or are good communicators and good teachers, they generally are also successful at recruiting. Well, ultimately what I look for and, and all that was guys that are good at everything they do. I don't feel like you have to settle and have one or the other. Um, but we have to have great players here at Oregon to be, to be great. Tyson Alger, I five quarter. As you guys continue to build your roster for this next month, how, how have you guys been able to evaluate the talent you do have? Is it just watching a ton of film? Like, do you happen to come across like a binder somebody forgot that had notes on people? Like, like how does that process go? And is there any communication with like the former staff at all just to know like what sort of what sort of team you got? You have a binder like that I can use? I mean, that would be awesome. So if you we'll, can... we'll take this offline and we can discuss that. <laughs> one no, I mean, ultimately... For me, um, yeah, like last night, it's still late nights and early mornings for us. We're, we're, we're sitting watching film of our current players. I think everyone thinks well, for us right now that we're evaluating all these players that are outside in the portal or this high school recruit here, or this recruit there. We're, I'm spending time last night watching film of our current players and our, our current guys. I want to be able to form my own opinion because I told our team yesterday that when there's transition and when there's a new – it's an option. It's an opportunity for you to be the absolute best version of yourself. I don't have to be the Dan Lanning I was at Georgia. I can be the best Dan Lanning I've ever been. Right. And same thing for our players, you know, whatever the staff was before um, and their opinion of you, that's great. But that the reality is that person is not here. Um, I'm here now be the best version of you recreate yourself. This is your chance to do that. And when change happens, I think there's new life. Um, there's new opportunity. And again, I know this was, a successful program I, I, we're taking over a really good situation here um but i want to be able to form opinions on our players i don't want to come in with pre preconceived notions about who's who and who's what that being said i know what's on our roster right now i know we have some great talent at positions if, uh, if we continue to do a great job of acquiring more talent uh, i think we'll continue to be in the driver's seat ashley adamson back to network Hey coach, uh, you mentioned just leaning on Coach Smart. I, I'm curious if uh, he's giving you any advice or what advice you'd be willing to share with us on the transition from being an assistant and a coordinator to running running your own program. You know, um, I'd say my 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 biggest ally with Coach Smart was more observation in the last you know month, uh, in the last four years, and my time with him in Alabama. More than anything, rather than asking a question, I just watched how he operated day in and day out. 
you know, after the game was over, he sent me a text message. Hey, love you, Dan. Got to remove you from the staff thread. And I you know, appreciate you, coach. Um, you know, but now we're on the other end of things. And that's like, I, I'm, I'll be forever grateful for what coach has done for me and my development as a coach. And I will certainly lean on him. I got a feeling between now and game one, we probably won't talk as much as we might after uh, after we complete that game. But I know he will always be a resource there for me and as I can be hopefully for him at some point, if there's ever some way I can help him. Trevor Denton, KVAL TV. Hey, Dan, um, after the national championship, you talked about just having an uncommon number of vocal leaders on that Georgia team. So just curious now that you're here, um, how do you go about identifying those guys on the Ducks roster? Time will tell. I mean, conversation, um, you know, opportunity, you know. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's, a, again, I will keep repeating myself. It's going to be more about what we do and not what we say, but you have to create environments where these guys have an opportunity to be able to be vocal, speak in front of the team, speak in front of each other. You have to understand what what makes a person operate and why, what makes them tick and why they go. And you can't do that without time. You know, the unfortunate part for us right now is I haven't been able to go on the road once as a as a coach for Oregon and recruit. Right. But tomorrow we get that opportunity. So we have to take advantage of that for our program. Um, but that means I'm not going to be here with our players so that you still have to operate the phone. You still have to be able to work through that. You still have to lean on people that are here in the building that aren't on the road recruiting and uh it's going to take some time to identify those leaders um but i know they exist you just got to give them the opportunity for them to to uh, come out james Krapia, the oregonian a few more on personnel dan i saw in the photo from the team meeting today it looked like carson battles and dj johnson were there uh have they formally decided to opt out of the draft and return is that the indicator there Two guys I'm not even sure if you're aware of because the pre your predecessor kept it deliberately vague, but Lance Wilhoyt and Jared Greenfield were away from the program this past year. Are they, is my understanding, are they no longer with the team in any way? And with all the churn, is your initial counter max 29 right now? A lot of questions there, James. I won't, I won't get into specifics on every single guy within our program. Um, we're going to war with the guys that are here. That's what I'm going to really focus on. Um, our numbers, you know, we're not going to necessarily be able to bring in um, an entire class. We're focused on the guys that are, like I said, here. Um, our, our number one job here is still retention of the guys that we have. Um, but we are in the in, in the field of acquisition as well. So we'll look at the portal. We'll look at uh, opportunities for high school players and junior college players that can enhance our program as we move forward. But as far as specific numbers, I'm not going to get into that on here. Jared Denny, Scoop Duck. Hey, Dan, um, you guys have already obviously dipped into the portal for two players already. And I'm just kind of curious what that process was like when you're still coaching at Georgia. Like you said, you haven't necessarily even seen the players on your own Oregon roster yet. You're still going out and getting a couple guys that um, presumably can help you guys improve the team. Yeah, I think you're able to lean on relationships of guys that you've brought on staff. Um, and, you know, I think it's really and, and then be able to get into conversations. The great thing is technology allows us to uh, evaluate film, Zoom phone calls, FaceTimes from long distances away, and you can build connections quickly. Um, but we've leaned a lot more than anything on um, experience on our staff with people in conference and across the nation, um, lean on what we know about players personally, and then able to do some deep dives in, in research in a way uh, guys can enhance us and help us become better. We have time for two more, Rob Mosley. Coach, is obviously the time of year when the strength staff you know, gets gets down to working, um, coming off, uh, off the season and, and to build up towards towards the spring and next season. I just your thoughts on Coach Love and kind of the impact you want him to have with your guys and also the decision to to keep Shad Williams from the from the previous staff. I'm so excited about Shad. You know, Shad is a guy, I mean, I don't know how open I can be about this, but he's a guy that I tried to work with before. I tried to bring him aboard before and uh, join a program for me that wasn't here. Um, I just am impressed with his ability to develop relationships with players. I think uh, I think really highly of Shad. And Oregon was so special to Shad that Shad decided to stay here. So I told him, hey, if you wouldn't come to me, I had to come to you. And it worked out that we get the coach together. And I'm thrilled about him. Wilson and I, you know, we have a history together. We worked together at Alabama at the same time. Um, I've, I'm excited to see how much he has grown in the profession. The one word I would use to describe him is passion. This guy operates every single day with a unique 
um, you know, passion. I think I was in the office yesterday a little bit before 6 a.m. I said, hey, Wilson, just let me know when you get in today. He goes, coach, I've been here since four. I was like, okay. So this guy, he uh, he's wired different. He's special. Um, he's really, you know, taking a deep dive into the relationships with our players. So I'm excited to see that firsthand. And um, those are two guys that I'm thrilled. You know, and we're also going to be able to keep Coach Davis here staff in the strength room is something I'm really excited about. Um, so we have a great, a great base there and we're, we're uh, able to bring a couple more guys. It'll be great additions that we'll be able to announce shortly uh, to help us in that room as well. Last question, Matt Preen, 247 Sports. Hey, Daniel, can you give us just your thoughts on adding um, Christian and Sam from the portal from, and how they fit into the program? And then you mentioned a couple of times just the opportunity to find more players to enhance this team. What are the areas you feel like you're going to try and shore up between now and the next signing day period? Yeah, ultimately, I think you have to look at uh, being in a place where you're going to be able to bring guys that can make an immediate impact um, or create, you know, healthy de depth uh, within your program, you know, and there's some positions that there's specific needs. But I think that one thing that our, our roster has right now, it also has some position versatility. You talk about a guy like DJ that played tight end and outside linebacker this year. You talk about powers who played on the D line and the offensive line. Um, I just think you can go down the board. There's several guys on our roster have done multiple things. So I think we'll have flexibility moving forward. Um, you know, talking about Sam and Christian specifically, you know, we have guys that we brought on to our staffs that knew those guys personally. Um, we're able to speak to the character, uh, the work ethic, the way they operated day in and day out. Um, and you know, I think that was an important piece as we were um, looking to see, would this be a great fit? I think both these guys also recognized the opportunity that sat in front of them here at, um, you know, here at Oregon. They, they These guys grew up big fans of Oregon. So being able to be a part of what we're doing moving forward was exciting for them and, and obviously us. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Have a great one. Go Ducks.